Today is December the 22nd. Today, we see that God is light. Today, as we read through the Bible in a year, I'd like you to begin to read the book of 1 John. Just read the first two chapters today. That's a very short reading. Uh, you should enjoy it. 1 John is a collection of sermons that John has linked together. Now, there is a pattern that he follows, but the structure is fairly loose. Now, in this letter, uh, John starts by saying, uh, chapter 1, verse 5, this is the message we heard from Jesus, now declare to you, God is light, there is no darkness in him at all. Have you ever seen the yin-yang symbol? It's uh, two paisley-like figures that interlock with each other. One is black, one is white. But in the black section, there's a small circle of light, and in the white section, there's a small circle of black. This reflects the Buddhist teaching that every good has a hint of evil and every evil has a little bit of good. John stands vehemently opposed to that. God is light and there is no darkness whatsoever within him. Second thing that John says, his second sermon begins in chapter 2, around verse 3, uh, we are told simply to obey God. The third sermon begins in 2.7, and here it's one of John's favorite sermons, love one another. And then finally, in 2.15, John says, love one another, but don't love the world. Enjoy today as you read 1 John 1 and 2. 1 John 1 through 2, New Living Translation, 1 John 1. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us, and we have seen him, and now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was the Father, and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you that we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light. There is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. 1 John 2 my dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the only one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, it is an old one that you have heard from the very beginning. 
This old commandment to love one another is the same message you heard before, yet it is also new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment, and you also are living it. For the darkness is disappearing, and the true light is already shining. If anyone claims I am living in the light, but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. I am writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I am writing to you who are mature in faith because you know Christ, who existed from the beginning. I am writing to you who are young in faith because you have won your battle with the evil one. I have written to you who are God's children because you know the Father. I have written to you who are mature in faith because you know Christ, who existed from the beginning. I have written to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your hearts, and you have won your battle with the evil one. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love from the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away, along with everything people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. But you are not like that, for the Holy One has given you His Spirit, and all of you know the truth. So I am writing to you not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and lies. And who is a liar? Anyone who says Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And in this fellowship we enjoy the eternal life He promised us. I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit, and He lives with you, so you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know, and what He teaches is true. It is not a lie. So, just as He has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ, so that when He returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from Him in shame. Since we know that Christ is righteous, we also know that all who do what is right are God's children. Scripture reading by Emily Herrera. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com tomorrow. We'll see that God is love.